Hi and good evening and tonight it's 8pm um, um, London time and every week we do this kind of retrospective look back at the news from Zimmer Peacock um, for the things that we've been up to um, this week and so today is the um, 29th of August 2021 but this is a look back at um, the week starting the 23rd of August um, 2021. And we do this kind of every week. We have kind of generally two webinars in a week. We do a much more technical, let's say, um, webinar on Thursdays at 8 a.m. London time. And then we do this um, sort of more um, informal sort of news webinar and we'll just update um, on a Sunday at 8 p.m. So the first thing I want to just touch upon is we did do our, as I say, our webinar on um, Thursday at 8 p.m. Uh, sorry, at 8 a.m. And um, we just put in a little bit of a note this week that we're starting to explore the idea of doing a summer school um, in 2022. So the ZP Developer Zone has really grown. Um, we've got a lot of members. The members are very active. Um, and so we wanted to sort of put together a, 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 a summer school. We'll probably do it in 2022 probably in Norway, because there we have the most labs and the most, um, so let's say, space. We also have an auditorium. So if you're interested in attending and being part of a sort of hands-on summer school, then it's probably worth watching the, or going back and finding the webinar that we did for the Developer Zone on Thursday. And it's probably worth um, sort of getting involved. And I'm Great to see you, Saran, this evening. I've got some news specifically for you. Um, so let's just do the news. So, yeah, we did the webinar on Thursday. Um, highlight was we're going to do a summer school next year, and we'll probably do it in um, Norway. Just a small photo that we put up this week, um, because um, we do do a lot of biosensor work at Zimmer and Peacock, and we do have some temperature data on our website, but this is just a picture that came through um, on our social media this week where a couple of our scientists um, were um, in the lab and they're actually using a temperature chamber there so we're able to characterize our sensors um, using well characterize them at different temperatures um, and so if you're kind of interested in biosensors but you're also kind of interested in understanding the temperature profile of these sensors then we have some data on our website but we're also quite capable of generating that um, temperature data as well and as saran is online maybe we should characterize our sensor at 37 degrees celsius as well which means we should mention it to yusuf um now this was just something i gotta be frank with you um we're very very lucky at zimmer peacock we've got a really strong um you know scientific team you know we have chemists and biologists you know material scientists you know molecular biologists under the word biology and cellular biology but we really do have a really strong engineering team. Um, and this is a kind of good example of it. We've um, we've opened up a new lab in um, the UK. The head count for us in the UK has gone to 20. So it's quite a significant um, size team these days. And um, we, so let's say, inherited three uh, multi-channel potential stats. But they weren't compatible with our... Um, with our technology platform, you know, we do a lot of screen printed electrodes. Um, the potential stats weren't compatible, but of course, what did our excellent engineers do? They made a little, um, essentially, I'd call it a breakout board, but it was a way that we could bring all the cables in from the potential stat, and then we could plug in the um, screen printed electrodes here, and then we could address and do sort of parallel work on um, the potential stat has eight channels, so we could basically do the work of eight or work on eight. Um, electrodes at the same time so that's pretty cool so we very lucky really strong science team but actually backed up by a really strong engineering team otherwise you've got scientists trying to do soldering and trying to do crocodile clips and stuff like that but when you've got a strong engineering team they see the problem they come up with really practical solutions so we're really lucky um, on that and it's probably a good reflection that if you're really going to be doing biosensor work you you've got to have these multi-channel, you know, potential stats. I mean, in this lab alone, we've got three of these guys. So that's 24 channels, you know. And, you know, in Norway, I've calculated we've got over 75 channels worth of 
you know, let's say potential stats. So it's absolutely, but you need these kind of numbers if you're going to be doing um, biosensor development. Otherwise, you're just doing one test at a time and it's just not enough data to make any meaningful um, make any any meaningful analysis from and as surround says online he says yeah nice cables yeah look how beautiful look <laughs> look how beautifully well done that is done so um, a couple of our engineers talk to some of our guys in norway so we have a team of engineers in the uk and a team of engineers in norway and because of modern technology it's very easy to interact and share drawings and stuff so the british team did it but backed up by the norwegian team so pretty cool job Saran, like I say, I'm glad you're on, you're on this evening because um, I think actually this will make you smile, to be frank. This is pretty cool. So at Zimmer and Peacock, we're synonymous with making screen printed electrodes. We do sputtered electrodes. We do wire electrodes. When I say sputter, we sputter on plastic, we sputter on glass. But we've also got a very strong um, biomems group. Many of our um, scientists and engineers actually have a formal background in sort of micro machines. Um, so here we are. This is something they produced this week. Um, hi, Aftab. So Aftab, you'll get a you'll get a dig out of this as well. So here we are, Zimmer Peacock. We make biosensors, and then I show you something like this. We have a really strong biomems group. So they go into the clean room, and they can you know essentially take silica and make features on it. And here we're making really small hundreds of nanometer diameter holes in an array you know here you can see we're kind of um these are more kind of um let's say square holes but so zimmer peacock yep yeah, we do we do you know screen printing but we also do um mems and bio mems type devices as well so there's quite a depth to the company and i think you know people like aftab are starting to appreciate that and saran who's actually in the company um knows it as well Hi, Hasil. Nice to see you this evening. So just some news for this week. The Biomems team has been um, busy at it. Um, but I just want to kind of say, you know, Zimmer Peacock is an unusual company. It's We do have screen printed electrodes. We do have wire electrodes. We do do sputter electrodes. Oh, and by the way, we also do um, Biomems um, type devices as well. Um, so this is something that's slightly more unusual. Now, I know many of you... Um, who follows Zimmer and Peacock, you're quite senior, you know, you're, um, you're masters, we've got PhDs and we've got postdocs, we have, you know, professors and assistant lecturers. So I understand that many of you are, um, are quite senior, but you have noticed something about us, which is, you know, we are both entrepreneurial, um, we're also very interactive. And as part of that interaction, I'm very keen to essentially have, um, well, I'll explain what we're up to. So we're trying, to, we're looking for students are in their second year or um, their penultimate year so I don't want people in their final final year because people in that final final years you know they're really busy you know they've got all their exams to do they've got their thesis to write but I'm very interested in identifying students um, yeah exactly yeah that, I forgot about that actually Aftab just made a comment that nano holes are really good for sensitivity improvement he makes a really good point actually we could actually bring those holes together with us with an electrode to make a really sensitive electrode i have to think about that it's a good point um so what we're looking to do is we're looking to identify second year students because they're experienced at the university but not students in their final final years and what we want these people to do is we essentially want them to be our ambassadors at campus you know so we want them to sort of you know use their creativity to talk about zimmer and peacock around the campus use their creativity to make um, social blogs about us, engage with the students. We want to build relationships at those campuses. So, you know, have them interacting with their peers, persuade their peers to do their um, master's projects with us or their undergraduate projects with us. Talk to the professors and encourage the professors, you know, to also work with us, um, encourage people to come and do internships with us. And basically also come up with any ideas that they want to sort of act upon. So if I was to summarize this, oh, and by the way, we're not, we're not expecting people to do this for, for free. This is going to be paid. So we're looking for um, outgoing, enthusiastic, social media friendly students um, who are at universities, who are kind of interested in Zimmer and Peacock and who can carry the message of Zimmer and Peacock around the campus. You know, so I'm very happy to... You know, if you know this kind of person and they're in their second year, 
Um, for example, I like second year students because they know the campus already. They kind of know where to go and then they can essentially represent us. It's not a full time position. It's just part time. You know, they can bring as much enthusiasm or as little as they want to it. And we will, um, you know, pay people for it. So we're, you know, to summary, we're looking for um, on campus ambassadors to help carry the message about Zimmer and Peacock around the campus. And I, I haven't geographically limited it. I'm more interested in finding the right people. So if you think you know people um, who could be ambassadors, they're undergraduates and they could be ambassadors for Zimmer and Peacock among the student populations, um, do let us know or do let them know about us as well. So um, Saran is online tonight. So I thought, Saran, this this will this will interest you a little bit. Um, we've just um, finished the capability of doing um, some capillary pulling also at Zimmer Peacock. So we, um, the next stage is we're actually going to turn these um, capillaries into microelectrodes, and then into. Um... No, no, no. It's a good question. Hanadi was asking. Good evening, Martin. Does the student have to be studying chemistry? No, the student doesn't have to be studying chemistry. I'm more interested in. At Zimmer Peacock, we don't hire chemists, we don't hire biologists, we don't hire engineers. We hire smart, enthusiastic people who really want to make a difference. So the quick answer is no. We're not like, you know, hiring a chemist to do these, um, play, to do this like on um, ambassador stuff. No, we're just looking for the enthusiasm. Well, all we'll ask you to do is reach out to us, tell us you're interested. We'll have an online meeting, see how we, you know, see if we think we can work together. And if so, you know, then we'll, we'll do it. So the reason I'm showing this picture of a glass capillary, I think this glass capillary is probably about one millimeter long. And Saran, who's on the line tonight, is one of our engineers. And I just want to let him know um, that we've started to practice pulling these capillaries. So in the first instance, you're going to start seeing a range of microelectrodes coming from us. So I know Aftab will find that interesting. Um, but then we'll functionalize those microelectrodes and turn them into microsensors. So, you know, these are some pictures that we took this week because, you know, we've been practicing. Um, but essentially taking a glass capillary, pulling it, stretching out that piece of glass. And then it, once we put a platinum wire in there, then we will essentially be able to make, you know, for example, biosensors. So it's a new capability that we have at Zimmer and Peacock. Um, and I just wanted to kind of, I knew that Saran uh, would be online this evening. I just, it's, yeah, yeah. He says microelectro is interesting. Yeah, it should be interesting. Um so the reason that we're getting towards this is one of the directions I think Zimmer and Peacock is moving in is neurosciences. Um, it's in the neuroscience world, they use a lot of um, microelectrodes. They kind of like to get in there and um, measure things like adenosine, I think, or um, serotonin. And, they, you know, they like to get right into the into the brain tissue with these microelectrodes. So we're busy practicing and developing that capability and i thought saran would find that um actually quite interesting so let me do a little summary i did appreciate um the comments um hanadi about um whether um it had to be chemistry no no just looking for enthusiastic people basically um and i think imperial would be a good place i gotta be frank um so let's summarize zimmer peacock so far so we did the we're gonna have a summer school well, not summer school. We're probably going to have a biosensor school next year, probably in Norway. I'm looking for feedback on that. The, the guys have been in the lab this week doing temperature characterization. Like I say, we've picked up three potential stats um, and we've been able to um, essentially get them to integrate with our screen printed electrodes thanks to the really strong engineering team that we have. Um, Aftab just made a very good point, actually, that you know, we are super unusual that we have this capability. We're just as strong in MEMS as we are in sort of biosensors and screen printing. So we've made these MEMS devices, and he's right. If we put, if we combine these micro um, holes, um, micro ray holes um, with um, uh, with our screen printed electrodes, then we'll have a very high sensitive um, electrode. Um, Saran was just asking me who to contact. It's Radovan, you need to contact Saran. Um, and just a little bit. Yep, ZP um, on campus ambassadors. Love to get uh, an undergraduate at every university. Essentially, somebody who's 
in the end, somebody who wants to join Zimmer and Peacock, but, you know, as part of that kind of journey towards us, you know, representatives on the campus, you know, when the, you know, when the, when the recruitment fair is on, you know, stand up for us and tell people that, you know, we're out here, we're growing and we're, you know, we're keen to um, engage with people. And then as Saran would just ask me in one of the chat features, um, Radovan and the team in, Nor I'm sorry, team in UK have just put together these, um, pulling these glass capillaries. We'll make microelectrodes next, and then we'll make micro biosensors. And I think this is part of the secret of Zimmer and Peacock. The team has reached a critical size and a critical strength, and we are able to do new product and new service generation really quickly. And they're, you know, they're skilled, you know, engineers and scientists. So really appreciate it. So thank you very much, um, Hanadi. I appreciate you um, coming um, and being with us this evening. I realize you were there on Thursday as well, so I will take a special note of that. Um, Saran, thank you very much for your um, questions. It's nice when one of our engineers comes along every week. Aftab, it's cool to see you again. Um, let's do that. Let's do another webinar um, pretty soon. And um, Hazel, um, if you've got any questions, give us a shout. And I hope you've signed up for the um, developer zone. All right, guys, so it's quarter past eight. Um, for many of you, it's quite, quite late. So have a good evening and hopefully see you.